what we now call the prison industrial complex. Um, and as you probably know, um, one out of every 100 adults in the U.S. is behind bars. One out of every 31 adults in the United States of America is in some way under the control of the criminal justice system. And this certainly is a legacy of slavery. Um, as I've said many times, the very fact that the death penalty continues to be used as an ordinary mode of punishment. Um, Troy Davis was assassinated uh, by the state uh, last, uh, uh, to use the language that many abolitionists use, last fall. However, uh, when one asks the question, why is an uh, the U.S., which is considered to be the largest industrial democracy in the world, why does it continue to use the death penalty, which is an outmoded uh, um, uh, punishment? And the answer can only be found in the fact that it was um, it received a new lease on life during slavery. Uh, as a matter of fact, when the prison was introduced around the time of the American Revolution, it was introduced as an alternative to capital punishment and corporal punishment. And in fact, capital punishment was, was uh, primarily dis, um, um, abolished for white people for almost all crimes with the exception of murder. However, under slave law, it continued to be used for a whole range of offenses. So my argument is that, that the fact that the death penalty still continues to be used can only be explained by the uh, extent to which it um, uh, has, um, it is the um, inheritor or, of the punishments of slavery. And that's just one example, the whole criminal justice system, the whole prison system. If one goes into any prison in the U.S. and one sees the overwhelming number of black people, black men, especially behind bars. So Michelle Alexander, who recently wrote a book on, called The New Jim Crow, uh, points out that there are more black men in prison and on probation and parole <coughs> than there were enslaved in 1850. There are more black men under uh, the, the constraints of the criminal justice system today than there were actually enslaved. So this is, um, this I think is the most dramatic example of the extent to which the legacy of slavery is very much alive. And then when one looks at the way in which immigrants uh, from the um, you know, former uh, colonies are treated in countries in Europe, uh, uh, you know, certainly we can't say that we have completely moved beyond colonialism. Uh, you know, the whole notion of post-colonialism, of course this is an era in the aftermath of colonialism, but it still retains so many of the structural effects, and especially the racism associated uh, with, with colonialism. So I could talk about that uh, uh, in more